Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in JE Advanced Solution Series and I'm continuing the 2020 question paper, picking out some ambiguous and tough questions that students are bugged and they have been requesting me to take out these uh, solutions. So uh, already we have done the optics problem and this is the second ambiguity. So we are counting them down one after another. There were quite a few in this 2020 edition of JE Advanced paper. Okay, so here's a question on compressing a water bubble and the problem was about an adiabatic manner of compression. Um, let's try to see whether the question was itself wrong or language was horrible or whether the key given by the J in the final uh, uh, situation was correct or wrong, okay? And why do we take up wrong and ambiguous questions? One of the positive things after the exam is over is when we investigate the things in a deeper and post-mortem way, then we unearth more and more concepts and get more clarity and in-depth understanding of the subjects. So that's the main motto, okay? So with that, let's try to see the formal wording of the question. Then I'll present you the important concepts involved. We'll try to dissect the wording of the question and see whether the key was right. And we'll round it off with three practice problems uh, with better language than what has been asked so that our conceptual understanding is tested, okay? So please give it a try by pausing the video for three to four minutes and then come back, okay? A spherical bubble inside water has radius R. Take the pressure inside the bubble and the water pressure to be P0. The bubble now gets compressed radially in an adiabatic manner so that its radius becomes R minus A. For A, very small compared to Kepler, the magnitude of the work done in the process is given by some expression that I underlined into X where X is a constant. If gamma is 41 by 30, you are supposed to find the numerical value of X. X need not be an integer. It could be any positive real number. Okay, so that's the idea. One of the things that bugged the students and also teachers alike when this question came out and the keys were presented by different institutes, why is there an R A square here and not R square A, which was uh, usually uh, thought out in this particular problem. Okay, so we'll try to investigate get that also at the end. And uh, very important thing is this A is very small. So when someone says it is A square, it's even more smaller. So was JE wrong in asking something or did they miss some information? We'll try to dissect it. Okay. So I hope you've given it a try. Let me start with the important concepts required one by one. Okay. A lot of things on the board. I'll try to take you through. So one many important things uh, that you need to understand about a reversible process. So if you're given an adiabatic graph and someone says he's going to use uh, PV power gamma equal to constant, that means it's a mathematically continuous curve. For a continuous curve, each and every dot is well-defined which means each and every state of the gas is well-defined. And that is only possible if gas achieves thermodynamic equilibrium at every step. What is meant by thermodynamic equilibrium, right? Basic ingredients are three subsets. One is thermal equilibrium, one is mechanical, another is chemical. You can read them through by pausing the video. I am taking the most important part for this particular video, which is the mechanical equilibrium. If there is a gas and there is a piston and gas is, let's say, expanding by the movement of the piston, one of the important things that mechanical equilibrium requests is that the uh, expansion of the piston should be in a very, very slow manner. There should not be any unbalanced forces or any accelerations involved. So that is a basic thing, along with the fact that the pressure should be same at all points inside the gas. And you, that pressure should not change when you keep it at rest. When the piston is at rest, the pressure should not change with time. As you move the piston, pressure can change. Okay, so to sum up, each and every step of all three equilibria are to be achieved by this gas, then only you can call it reversible process, and then only you can use this PV power gamma equal to constant and the other adiabatic expressions that we learn for reversible ones. Okay, so keeping that in mind, We'll conclude that if I had a simple picture of a gas expanding under adiabatic process, I'm taking expansion. We'll also see the compression part in the bubble. Okay, so how do you visualize this? If I want to expand this and follow each and every point of this reversible process, then I can't move the piston very fast. I have to, let's say, have a weight of sand grains on it, remove grain by grain, DM element by DM element, so that the piston feels lighter and moves up. And wait after each and every grain is removed, you wait for sufficient time for the gas to achieve the state so that I can put a dot on this graph. 
then only the area under the graph makes some sense and you can use the formula for the work done that we study in reversible process. So quasi static that is very slow movement non accelerated movement is only allowed for the concept to be applicable. Otherwise, you will call it as irreversible process. Okay, right. So by taking the actual wording of the question, let's try to attempt the question without any bias and see whether the answer matches or not. Okay, so the first word sentence says that the outside pressure and inside pressure of the gas uh, and the water are equal. He said that in the question, right? Let me go back and highlight that. So here you see the pressure inside the bubble and outside are same which is kind of weird because we we know that inside pressure should be slightly higher for the curvature and that comes from the surface tension. So this gave an impression to most students that surface tension is being ignored because even in the final answer, there's no surface tension. So if I take that seriously, I take that word seriously uh, and for, uh, go forward, then the pressure, even at later stages also, if it changes inside, it should be equally taken outside. That's what I'm showing here on the right side top of your screen. I'm saying the pressure inside and outside, if they are same at the start, they should keep uh, having that equality throughout. Otherwise, this membrane will have an acceleration. You will not have a force balance uh, because surface tension is already ignored. Uh, so and reversible process is a very important concept that we need for solving the problem. And second important ambiguity was the work done word that was used. Okay, so let's go back. He said magnitude of work done in the process, but he never told us who is doing that work. Is it the gas inside or is it the water outside? So I'll take individually two possibilities in the exam. The word work done may mean work done by both of those. That means the inside uh, air or the gas and the outside water uh, outside the bubble. Okay, then it, since these two have been ascertained to be equal, some of these works will be zero. It's quite obvious. Uh, outside pressure will do positive work in compressing the gas and inside pressure will do negative work because you are re reducing the volume, but they will always be step by step equal works because if one process goes in this direction, the other process actually goes back in the same direction as this one. So the both the graphs will overlap with each other and you end up getting zero. W, if let's suppose you want, you can't mark a zero, let's suppose what, what JE wanted to ask. If you want to take only one of the two, work is let's say done by the gas only he's asking, then or outside, you are anyway going to take the modulus, right? It will be simply PDV. Why DV? Because he said the volume change is very, very small. For spherically small volume changes, I can write less four pi r square dr where dr itself can be approximated to be a where a was mentioned in the question to be very small so this was the expected answer for most students in the exam and they were trying to search for this expression r square a whereas in the expression they gave r a square the expression doesn't even match that is where students found it very very difficult to answer and understand what je was trying to ask they were not very clear now let's try to see what JE wanted and how they could have asked the question. Okay, so this is it. This is the most important slide of this particular video, right? Apart from the practice problems at the end. So let's see what JE wanted to ask, but failed in conveying it to the students in the exam. I've taken only part of that DV graph. Please understand this itself is a very, very small uh, curve. It's almost can be equated to in a straight line because the volume change is DV only and the pressure change is DP, okay? So assuming outside pressure to remain constant at P naught, that means he's not changing the outside pressure. Inside gas pressure should vary adiabatically, but reversibly. Reversible process, then only I can take each and every point of this. And let's say the ch change in pressure is P naught plus delta P. Okay, so P naught has become P naught plus delta P for inside gas. And then they calculated W both. Okay, then works won't cancel. Then what are we doing for the outside water? Outside water, if the pressure is applying uh, a force on the bubble and radially compressing it, outside water volume is increasing, right? So you are going from this dot here in this direction. So work done by the outside water would be area under this rectangle, only this part of the rectangle. I hope you are following. Whereas area work done by the gas inside would be this one. Okay, this area, that means this entire negative area. So positive rectangular area and the negative entire area, when you add up, you end up getting this small tiny weeny area. 
Okay, so let's me, let me cut this one out and I presented it here. Can you see? Remember, this is not a differential element. This is differential of a differential element. You have an area of nearly a triangle with dp into dv as the answer. And that's the reason why you ended up getting a square in the expression. Remember, a square is proportional to dv whole square. That's what it is. But how is this allowed? This is not allowed, right? Then, then you are assuming the inside pressure and outside pressure are not equal. So then how can you use adiabatic reversible process? That is where JE made a mistake. They should have mentioned that the surface tension exists, but is unknown. Uh, so that outside and inside pressures are not equal. If outside and inside pressures are taken equal, then you cannot actually solve the problem other than zero, you will not get any other answer. So let me try to solve this now with this triangle. What is the area of a triangle? half base into height, that's what I'm using here. Minus sign is to tell us the importance of the sign. That's why he asked magnitude so that he can mark a positive answer. So half dp into dv, I put a mod because dv is a negative number, okay? So dv is as expected four pi r square dr. To get it into the final expression, I need to eliminate dp. So for that, I'm using adiabatic reversible process. This is allowed only if it is reversible. So D of this PV power gamma should be zero because this inside thing is a constant. Then you'll rearrange DP comes out to be minus gamma DV by V. Okay, so using UV rule of calculus chain. And then uh, DV by V for any spherical volume change is three DR by R. This is very obvious and very quick calculation you can make. Okay, right. And therefore this DP I'll substitute here. Let me go slightly up so that you can visualize this. Okay, so I'll substitute this dp into this expression like this and I end up getting this. Okay, and this is where here you have a dr, here you have dr, you get a product and there you have the magic, our ambiguous way of asking the question from JE where you'll end up getting dr whole square and rearranging the rest of the things, this three and all gives you a three gamma by two outside with the required expression with r a square and minus three gamma by two's modulus will come out to be 2.05, which they gave as the answer, which uh, is very, very weird. They could have made it a very good question by giving proper wording. So what I'll do is I'll try to take the pain of modifying the question to make it authentic, okay? So three modifications required for the language of the question to make it a correct key would have been pressure inside the bubble and water he said is P naught, right? And uh, you should say surface tension is unknown and variable, but not negligible. Variable is also very important because if you take constant surface tension, then 2T by R pressure gives, won't give you the adiabatic process, okay? So you want them to believe or the students to take that the inside and outside pressures won't be same except at the start. Take water pressure to be P naught, they should have mentioned, and not the bubble gas. They should not say bubble and water, but initially they should say the inside pressure is almost equal to P naught so that I can start at the same point on the graph, but not later. They should have mentioned that. And then work done. This is a very loose language. Are you asking work done by gas or outside or both? It should be mentioned, right? We are not giving any options also. So it should have been work done by gas inside plus water on the bubble should have been asked and then this question makes some sense with a square as for the student students should have taken this as a square and thought about okay if you are getting a d a square means a differential terms square then you should have thought in this and i know i have investigated post-mortem and all these things i took some time in the exam it is very very difficult with this kind of an ambiguous language thrown in Right, right. So that's it. And uh, this question was also talked about uh, along with uh, the J advanced. The main problematic question was the optics problem, which I've already produced the video. A uh, link of that is in the description in case you have missed that one. This is the actual and complete analysis. Okay, the kind of solutions that you end up getting uh, in the solution series of uh, let's say some different institutes. It won't give you the complete picture. Now, most of them try to bring out these answers that the J gave in the preliminary key. You'll see solutions where th people get three, four, and forcibly get five, and maybe even seven or eight, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's all nonsense. There is no answer to this question, and it has been thoroughly discussed with complete analysis. So please do go through that video. Link is in the description below. And 
on similar lines, there is actually a JE Advanced Solution series running in this channel where we pick up the difficult, weird, and educative select problems. You could see weird problems educate us with uh, thorough concept analysis. Okay, I call it as alpha and omega of your preparation because it should be the first and last thing you should do before you go into your JE examination. So leave your requests also uh, for other questions that you might find uh, helpful and I will come up with it. Don't, don't put some standard questions in the comments. Uh, it should be something for which solution is not properly available in the internet, okay? So link of this playlist is in the description below. Watch it. I think I've already produced 10 such problems. I'll do more before your JE advanced exam. So uh, before we move on to the practice problems, I just like you to tell that there are other series also. It's not just about JE advanced uh, solutions. So please do check out the rest of the series. Many more are there. I don't want to explain everything. Just check the description. You'll find a lot of uh, treasures there, okay? With these things out of our way, let's see the practice problems I am going to pick up from Pathfinder Solution Series. And this is how the language should be. A standard question paper like a JE Advance or Olympiad, where the language should be very, very clear. Amount of heat is slowly supplied. That means he's talking us about reversible process. Molar specific heat. Okay, so all these things. Very, very simple problem. And this is a good JE Advance candidate. Similarly, one more question. Uh, the first part of this question is similar to the practice problem one, but the second one is what that excites me. It's in the check your understanding six. Again, properties of matter where bubble and gas expansions are considered. It's a sure shot candidate for target JE advanced uh, situations. We don't know which year they last, but they definitely have a chance of uh, getting through with this particular concept. Okay, so please do check it out and uh, I'll try to produce a single video with all these three problems. Another question, which is not a bubble i know it's a balloon and elastic properties are taken instead of surface tension but the approach towards solving this problem would be also on the similar line so that's why i've clubbed these three problems into one set and we'll take up a video in case you uh, are finding it troublesome and students are not able to uh, answer them on their own okay if you don't want me to wait for producing a video of this and you want an instant solutions uh, already pathfinder solutions are being discussed uh, in in a vigorous manner in separate chapter wise channels that i have set up in the discord server uh, it's not like you have entire Pathfinder at one place, like in Telegram. Each chapter, Pathfinder Kinematics, Pathfinder Newton's Laws, each chapter has a separate uh, channel there. So all the students and myself are involved in those discussions and quick solutions are being coming up. And that's what helps students in JE Advanced Preparation. And in case you don't know what is Discord and what is this uh, channel doing it, about it, please do watch a video tutorial that I have produced to make beginners understand the importance of that uh, server. And please do visit it and check it out for two or three days. You'll understand its importance. Okay, link of this video is in the description below. Okay, so in case you have liked the presentation, please do give a like, like the videos get propagated more so that it helps my channel and do subscribe to my channel. And more than subscribing, watch two or three videos per day till your JE advanced examination is over so that you can cover up those 200 plus videos that I have produced by this point of recording this video, uh, which gives you an edge over others to uh, prepare well for your JE and mains and advanced examinations. Okay, so uh, thanks for staying this long and see you in the next video.